finish. And if he say, I contribute this amount of tzedakah to this kosher cause, he must give it. Even in, when it comes to tzedakah, even if he only thought about it in his mind, he's already obligated. Not just a thought, a final thought. He didn't have to say it loud. He was sitting with himself in his house thinking I want to give this rabbi such and such amount to do what he does. That's it. What was the amount? I don't know, $5,000. And he said, okay, tomorrow when I go, I give him the money. By tomorrow, the Yetzirah already attacked him. This, the stock is down, the market is down. His wife just spent a huge amount on the American Express. So he has to cut in a budget. So where is he going to cut? From the 5,000 he has to give to the rabbi. 2,000 it's enough for him, not allowed. Once he was sagur in his mind, if he was just debating, how much should I give? 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, ah, I'm not sure. Thinking. Did not make a final decision in his mind. That's no, no nether yet. But once he finished all his debate with, his, with himself and he decided that in this particular moment, today, tomorrow, next week, when I see him, I'm giving him this amount, he must give it. He cannot change the amount. You want to give to poor, you want to give to Bachur Yeshiva, you want to give for Kiruv. Once you closed in your mind to give, you must give. The only time you can get out of that vow is if you find that the vow was made based on false information. You thought that that's a holy man that does holy things, and a minute before you came to give the money, someone just warned you that the money goes to buy Swiss watches for $100,000 a piece, or to buy Mercedes, or to buy, I don't know what, private jet. That's not what I had in mind. I wanted to help Yeshiva. I wanted to help Kiruv. I wanted to help uh, the synagogue. I wanted to help the Mikveh. That was a, that's what I had in mind. Ah, now when I found out that it's not exactly the way they presented it, now you just found a way out. But it's not a way out completely. You must give the money, but not to him to a similar cause or higher. So I'll give you an example. If you wanted to give it to Yeshiva A, we're not saying names, so there's no Lashon here. Yeshiva A, and you went to check the Yeshiva out before you give a big amount of money to that Yeshiva, and you found out they're not 100% in a standard of whole Yeshivot. Things are not perfect there, let's say. That's an understatement. So you say, no, no, I'm not giving them a penny. I see the, who's teaching here all kinds of heretics, all kinds of modern, corrupted people. I don't want to give them a penny. The money is not going to Kedusha, it's going to the Sidra Achav here. They let all kinds of people from the blacklist to teach here, to speak here, to write here. They admire all kinds of heretics. This yeshiva is not for me. I don't want to give them a penny. But it's true. You found out that they're not kosher, you don't have to give them. But what about the amount that you pledged? Even in your mind, needless to say in your mouth, needless to say in public, if it was an auction or something. This you must give. You must give it to a different yeshiva. You have to find a kosher yeshiva, and the same amount you wanted to give them, you must give them, because the vow does not get cancelled. What you say to give to yeshiva, you must give. But you can switch from non-kosher to a kosher one. Same thing synagogue. You wanted to give money to a specific synagogue. They building the synagogue. And you say, okay, once there's gonna be a grand opening, I'm gonna give you a check for such and such amount. You told the Gabai there. Then you came to the grand opening, you saw there's no separation between the men and the women. It's not kosher, it's not a kosher place. You're not allowed to give them a penny. You're not allowed. Not, you're not obligated. A place that is not kosher according to the halakha, you're not allowed to give them a penny. 
So now, since you are not allowed to give the money to the synagogue that you thought it's going to be kosher, but now you just found out they are not kosher, so you must give it to a different synagogue that it's kosher. But you don't have to give to a synagogue. You can give to yeshiva instead. Because yeshiva is a lot higher than a synagogue. Synagogue is a silver coin. Yeshiva is a diamond. If somebody gave you a thousand dollars to buy him a silver coin, and instead you bought him a diamond, will he complain? No, he will kiss you on the head. Wow, what an upgrade. I thought you bring me silver coin. No, look what I got you. I got you a diamond for the same amount of money. That's a great upgrade. No one will complain. But if I gave you to give me a diamond and instead you're giving me a silver coin, of course I will complain. That's deceiving. So there is a rule. It's called Ma'alim Bakodesh. You're allowed to do an upgrade to the cause, but not a downgrade. So for instance, if you wanted to give to one poor person X amount of money, and then you found out he's not eating kosher food, he's not making brachot, he's not Shomer Shabbat, you're not allowed to give him money. Not allowed. Well, what is he going to do with your money? Mechalel Shabbat with that. But you don't want that. So now you have to find a kosher poor man. Kosher poor man. Poor man? Poor man! No problem. You did not downgrade the cause. But you can also give it to an Avrech that learns Torah full day. Maybe he's not as poor as this first one, but he's a kosher person. You give him the money, he learns Torah with that. That's an upgrade. And Kiruv is above everything. No matter what you pledge to hear, to deal, to that, if in the end you found something that is not kosher, you give it to save souls, there's nothing greater in the eyes of Hashem than saving souls. It's written clearly in the Zohar, Parashat Ruma, in Chovot HaLevavot, and in hundreds of other sources. So if you switch to good yeshiva, you're always good. No matter what was the original cause, if in the end you found that it's not kosher and you give to good kosher yeshiva, you're good. Because yeshiva is in the highest level. If you switch to Kiruv, you're good. Less than that, you have to check. If you pledge to yeshiva, you cannot give it to a synagogue. Unless the synagogue has a kolel there that learns full day. Oh, it's a different story. So I give to the kolel. You got the point or no?